Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from the Diesel Classroom. Today we're just going to do a quick little lesson on using our snap-on vacuum filler here for our coolant system. Okay, so first of all, we have our coolant system all the way drained. It's totally empty in here. We can't have any um, coolant left in here, otherwise it's going to back up in our machine as we're putting the back into it. It's all going to make a big mess. So we need to have our system totally drained out. This is only for refilling after we totally drained everything. Okay, so I got my little snap-on, little vacuum filler up here. I just attached it to where the radiator cap normally goes on here. You see we have a couple different hoses here. So this little one here, this is kind of just a vent hose. You'll see as I hook my shop air up to this and have it running, um, air is going to be coming out of here to make a vacuum inside my system here. Our other hose here are longer hose with a little screen on the end of it. This is our hose that we're going to be putting down in our bucket of coolant that's going to be sucking back up through here when we go to refill it here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, obviously we're going to have on our safety glasses and all that fun stuff here. Our system's totally drained. We're going to hook some shop air up to this right now. So, got my shop air hooked up to it. I got both of my valves off right now. So I got an input valve and an output valve here. So this one here, I'm just going to turn it on. It's going to get loud for a second because all my shop air is going to be going through here, going by here, coming out right here, and it's going to make a vacuum inside my system there as it passes through there. It's going to be sucking all the air out of my coolant system. You'll see as it's going to, all our hoses and stuff are going to suck shut. So we're going to be watching our gauge here, and we're going to try to get it in the green here between 25 and 30 inches of mercury here. So pretty good vacuum on our system here. It'll drain all the air out of there. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on here. It's always good to point this hose away from um, yourself or anything, just because if there's any residual coolant in our system, it could be picking it up and it'll be kicking it out here on us. I'm gonna turn on my shop air. We want it set between 90 and 150 PSI. So this is a nice tiny radiator here. We fill them up pretty quick. Okay, that's all. That's good enough for this one here. So I got 25 inches of mercury here. So got a nice vacuum on my system. You can see all my hoses and stuff are sucked shut right now on my system. With this off right now, I got no air going in there. My gauge should stay right there. If I start to lose um, any pressure inside there or any vacuum inside there, that means I have a leak in my system and I got to fix that before I go any further. So everything looks good. It's holding vacuum on there. So now I can go to refill it. Okay, so I'm going to take my coolant jug, by what I just drained into right here, this bucket here. So. I'm going to submerge this all the way down in my bucket. So it has a nice little pickup screen on there, but again, you know, obviously we want nice clean coolant going into our engine here. So I'm going to have that submerged in our bucket. The instructions tell us we should have our bucket up above this right here. I've done this, you know, hundreds of times, and most of the time you can just have your bucket on the floor. It's not going to affect anything. Um, it's hard with our big trucks and stuff to hold, you know, 20 gallons of coolant up above our whole radiator system. This one's nice and small. This one only holds, I probably got two gallons in my bucket right here. So this one here is just a little Gamar diesel out of a skid steer. We got our radiator here, but it's not even the whole radiator. It's only this section of it right here. This half of it here is a hydraulic cooler. So not very much to it right here. Okay. So I got my line submerged down in there. But I got to make sure it stays submerged the whole time. If I start to suck any air or anything out of there, it's, I'm going to lose my vacuum up there before it's full. Okay, so I got my shop air shut off. I'm just going to turn on this valve right here. You can see my coolant's going through my hose here pretty quick. So coolant's flowing back into my radiator. I can open it up full blast there now. And again, I just want to make sure I don't suck any air up. So as it's sucking out of there, it's sucking out pretty quick out of my bucket. I want to keep it tipped so it keeps sucking out of there. Like you see, it goes pretty quick down through there. Okay, so 
you see I'm starting to suck air now. So I just lost my vacuum because I was just starting to suck air. So I just sucked almost all the coolant back in there. I just have a couple little ounces left down there in the bottom. So you see the two gallons went in there pretty quick. Okay, so now I'm full. Now I can unhook everything. I hook my shop air off of there. Make sure my hose and everything drain back in there so you don't make a mess. Get all the coolant off that we can. Now we're safe to take this off. So just like our little snap-on pressure tester, we have our little Mickey Mouse ears on here that we can use to relieve any pressure. We can see our gauge that we don't have any pressure or vacuum inside there, so we should be good, but always safety first. So just turn our little Mickey Mouse ears just a little bit, and it would let any pressure out if there was any in there. So none in there. We're safe to take this off. Again, don't make a mess, and it's off of there. Put our cap back on, you know, obviously make sure it's full and everything. I can see the coolant right there. So we just refilled our system pretty quickly there. Okay, a little closer look at our little vacuum filler right here. I'm going to make a mess all over my classroom, but you can see right here, here's our whole vacuum filler. We just have our little filler that goes on the filler neck here, our little connection. We have our connection for our airline, and then just our um, shutoff valve for our pickup tube here. So when we go to use this, we make sure all, both our valves are shut off. We hook our shop air to here. We turn on our shop air and we build up the vacuum. So you wanna get it in the green. If it doesn't get to the green or it gets up there and then drops off real quick, that means we have a leak in our system and we gotta figure out what's leaking inside our system. So I get it all the way up in the green. I shut off my shop air and now I can open this valve up over here and it's gonna refill my system pretty quickly as we just saw. So that's all there is to it. The reason, the reason why this is so important is with our modern diesel engines that have emissions on them, has our EGR valve and EGR cooler on there. If we don't do the vacuum fill and we have any air pockets or anything inside our EGR cooler, as our vehicle fires up, we instantly have you know 400 to 1,000 degree exhaust going through this right here. It's going to heat it up real quickly. If we have any air in our system here that eventually go out of here, that cold coolant is going to touch inside here and it's going to crack internally. And this is $1,500. Um, so you don't want to crack these internally. If you crack them, they're junk, got to replace them. No fixing to it. So that's why we do it on our modern diesel engines. Plus, you know, it's really easy to refill, especially if we have like cold gallons of coolant and big jugs or anything. We need to. You know, do it that way instead of trying to pick up 20 gallons of coolant and dumping a funnel. So that's all there is to it. So stay safe and give her diesel.